So it's usually um, caused from dehydration and the, the muscle's not either getting enough fluid or enough electrolyte. Uh, and typically a muscle cramp whilst exercising, the science has led us to believe that it's typically the electrolyte sodium that's causing that more so. Um, so it could be just not getting enough fluid in in general, and it could be a combination of fluid and um, sodium as well, uh, it's just causing the muscle to spasm um, from not having enough through throughout um, exercise. So there's a couple of things that we can do to avoid that. Um, but unfortunately, the back end of a race, you can't practice that too much in training. So generally where we'll start is some fluid balance um, or home sort of hydration testing, getting an idea of um, the athlete's sweat rate. Uh, and it's very easy to do over an, an hour session, for example. Um, let's say we had a 80 kilo athlete that had an hour session, um, ideally at race pace, because we're trying to um, imitate race conditions as much as possible ideally of an outside conditions as well, because indoors sweat rate is going to be very different to outdoor sweat rate. Um, so 80 kilo athlete, one hour training session, just to make it easy for my example, um, if they took on no fluid throughout that training session and they ended up at 79 kilos, it's one kilo over that hour or one liter over that hour. And generally throughout a training session and a race, we're trying to meet 50 to 80% of that target to keep on top of hydration. When it comes to electrolyte, everyone's really different. Um, so I don't like to provide too much um, uh, sort of too specific sort of recommendations around that because some people will need a really small amount of sodium per hour. Some people will need a really large amount of sodium per hour. Uh, and given that sodium can affect sort of blood pressure, it's not something that I think people just take loads of for the sake of it. It needs to be really well planned and, and thought out with um, a health professional if possible. Um, a lot of sports drinks will be um, sort of targeted to general sort of sweat, sweat rate um, or sort of sodium losses. So most people should be fine with the typical um, sodium content of sports drinks. Uh, however, for the heavy sweaters and the heavy salty sweaters, um, they often need to be adding either salt tablets or electrolyte powders um, or some form of extra sodium to make sure that they're not cramping. There's products out there like Cramp Fix by Fix Nutrition. Are you a big fan of those? The goal is to um, avoid cramping in the first place. So I love those products um, for a bit of a cure. Ideally, we're trying to prevent, and that's through um, a really thought out and well-planned, well-practiced hydration plan, which is going to come in a part of a solid race nutrition plan. Um, but if you are going to cramp, then something like Cramp Fix works wonders. Um, and and it usually sort of fixes the cramp relatively quickly. Uh, the problem is if you've already cramped, we've already had an impact on that race time. Um, so ideally we're trying to avoid that happening in the first place. So how does the cramp shot fix actually work? So typically products like that will use either pickle juice or a vinegar, um, which the ingredients of that um, basically target overreactive nerves. So it essentially tells um, taste buds tell the brain to then tell the muscle to stop cramping. It's really interesting. Um, we're still not exactly sure what causes the muscle cramp, um, the science behind that, but uh, yeah, they would sort of send a message to stop the cramp. There's a fair bit of old school advice going around and I've definitely been told this as a junior that cramping is just something you can train out of your body. Is this the case? That's, um, yeah, I mean, there's many different reasons um, or potential reasons that a cramp could occur. Um, dehydration is one, um, potentially being untrained, um, but there's just, you know, there's no clear cut reason for it, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're unfit, no. Just like carb loading, would you sodium load leading into key events? So days leading into it, no, and the reason for that is the kidneys will just flush it out, so it won't actually have any impact on um, race day cramping. Um, the only reason that I would do any form of sodium or electrolyte loading would be um, to support improving the absorption of fluid, but it's not really a load. I would just be a small amount that I'd ensure that the athlete is consuming, whether it's in drink form or um, with their food, to make sure that they're well hydrated. But I definitely wouldn't do a sodium load leading into a um, days leading into a race because the kidneys will just flush it out and it's just going to put more pressure on the cardiovascular system. 
Um, on the day of a race, uh, again, this is only something I'd be doing with an athlete I've practiced it with um, and, and based on, on their history of cramping and racing and, and if they're a really sort of um, high risk cramper, we may do a small sodium load um, or a more aggressive sodium load in the sort of final two to three hours before a race. Um, that's the only time frame that's going to be effective. Um, we don't want to be doing it days leading into racing. Usually cramping is surrounded by like hotter conditions, you're not used to the heat. So would you use products like prepped to super hydrate? Yeah, I mean, first things first, I would go back to the training as much as possible. So in training, and this isn't always possible given um, depending on, on where you live, but ideally we're trying to train in race conditions often and practice that. So similar temperatures, similar humidity. Uh, and when I'm getting my athletes to do their sort of hydration um, and sweat um, testing at home, it's not a one-off test that I want them to do. It's multiple tests in different conditions, um, you know, different humidities, different temperatures, so that regardless of the race conditions on the day, we're going to have a solid plan to sort of match those as much as possible. And that's where sweat testing and sweat patch testing um, limitations lie, is, is we don't have a lot of um, recent research to back those. And also it's a, it's a one-off measure on that particular day um, temperature, humidity, all those sorts of things. So ideally I'm getting people to, um, weigh in, weigh out, uh, around different sort of temperatures, always ideally at, at, um, race intensity. There's no point doing it on a really cruisy, easy session because that's not how you race on race day. Um, but products like prepped, um, can work really well in the fact that it can hyperhydrate or help hyperhydrate. Um, glycerol is also another performance supplement that, um, I'll often use, particularly for multi-stage events, that will help um, hold more fluid in the body and, and, and hyperhydrate um, as well, leading into events that are either really, really long um, or multi-stage events or multi-day events, um, or potentially the, the conditions are, are really hot and really humid. And we're trying to make sure that you're extra hydrated before race starts. Mm -hmm.